All right, so we're going to now go over how we can figure out the resultant vector by using simply component vectors. So we're going to use the x component and then the y component of all the other vectors that we're adding up. Uh, and I'm going to explain, um, you know, with this example. But this is going to be, be like a important, you know, application because um, a lot of the time you're just not going to be able to um draw your vectors with the arrows tip by tip and know exactly where the endpoint is going to be. You're not going to be able to just do that because you're going to get directions that are decimals or magnitudes that are, you know, very like tedious to calculate. So let's look at what um Timmy the bird is doing. So Timmy flies 72.4 meters at 32 degrees east of north. Then he flies 57.3 meters at 36 degrees south of west, and then 17.8 meters straight south. So we want to figure out where he is at the end. So we want to find the resultant vector by adding these three vectors together. So over here, let's draw like um, let's draw what these vectors are going to be looking like. Just a second. Here's our x axes and our y. We'll go something like that. All right, so let's say we're starting here, and let's have this first direction and magnitude be our be our first vector. And we're going to have it be vector a. Let's go, um, you know, uh, and let's use a red marker. I'm going to draw this, you know, pretty good. All right. It's all right. Yeah, it's fine. Now, let me straighten that out. All right, there we go. Vector A. And this is what, 72.4 meters? And we have an angle here of 32 degrees. Now let's also calculate this angle because this is going to be the important one that we're going to use to find the results in vector. I'm going to explain when we do it, but it's, it's mainly because we um, use standard position when we're dealing with trig functions. So then this would be um, 58 degrees because both of those have to add up to 90. Okay, now let's look at the second vector. So, so let's actually, let's go with blue for this one. Um, so 57.3 degrees at 36 degrees, 57.3 meters at 36 degrees south of west. So we're going to be going something like this. Um, so this, remember, this is south. And actually, yeah, let me put our, let's put a, you know, compass to refer to, because sometimes you'll have um, textbooks that won't necessarily have it oriented this way. It, it doesn't actually have to follow this way all the time. Sometimes it's more convenient to maybe switch the east and west, but have, you know, a diagram that to let the reader and yourself know what directions you're using. And then... So for this one, we would go down something like, well, something like that, but let's go from over here. So again, let's think of this as a XY coordinate system. We want to go want to go 36 degrees in this direction. Well, it's going to be something like this. The so vector B and 57.3 meters is the magnitude. Now, this angle here is, is 36 degrees. But 
let's look at this angle because again, this is the positive x axis going all the way around there. This will give us 180 plus 36 degrees. And so that'll be 216 degrees. And finally, we go just 17.8 meters straight south. So we'll call that vector C. Let's use our purple. So it's just something like this. Not drawing the scale, of course. The so straight south. So again, remember approaching this as if this is an X, like a vertical and horizontal X, Y axis. Now, we're gonna end up somewhere here. Now, first off, the question is probably like, well, how, how did I know that? This is, this is kind of my point. Like, when you're just drawing vectors tip to tip, you can't really like know for sure where you're gonna be exactly, unless you have like a perfect um, grid with very precise measurements and you're, you know, again, have a compass and all this, it's, it can be very um, time consuming and tedious because, you know, you're just doing practice problems on paper. So we're gonna look at how components play a role and make our lives a lot simpler. But let's first look at what the, what the resultant vector is going to be. So remember that the resultant vector is adding these three together and seeing where they end up. And it's just going to be right here. It's going to end up right over here. And this is going to be our resultant vector. So one straight line in a certain direction gets us to our final location. That's what we want to figure out. So we have an angle, remember, that we were for our direction that we needed that we needed to find out like what that angle is. And what we also have is let's um remember that we can approach these vectors, vector magnitudes as you know a right triangle with the legs. So in this direction. We call this the x component of the resultant vector. And this is going to be the y component. So we want to figure out the x and y component to get the resultant vector. Because ultimately, that's what is going to let us you know, find this. It's because using the Pythagorean theorem, the resultant vector will be equal to the r or the x component squared plus the y component squared or the square root of those two added together squared. Again, we're just using the Pythagorean theorem that we've been using over and over. Well, now we have to figure out, well, how do we get this? How do we get these component vectors? So it's pretty simple if you just can understand that, well, if you're going to have a a point on you know an x y coordinate system, then any point, in this case we're looking at this point, is just going to have one x coordinate and one y coordinate. So you're essentially going to move in some direction, and long you know sideways you're gonna, you're going to move sideways some amount, maybe it's to the right, maybe it's to the left, maybe it's nowhere, but you're going to move some direction some some amount sideways in the x direction and some amount up and down in the y direction. So to find those, find the r sub x and, and the r sub y, we just add up the component vectors of each of the vectors we have. So we add up the x component of the a vector and we to the x component of the b and to the x component of the c. That's how that's going to give us the x component of the resulting vector, and we'll do the same idea for the y component.
Okay, so let's look at how we do this because it's actually pretty simple and cool because we can just look at our diagram and it's going to make a lot of, it's going to make like very like, it's going to, make, it's going to be like kind of obvious once I, once I show you. So here's our first vector A. And again, we're thinking about this as, you know, a right triangle, you know, perpendicular to the X axis here. And so the R component will just be how far we go right here. This is the R component of vector, or the X component of vector A. And then this side, this leg, is just going to be the Y component of vector A. Now to find those, let's go over here. I mean, let's see if you can see that. It looks like you can see that, yeah. So the X component of vector A will be the magnitude of vector A, which is going to be 72.4 degrees or 72.4 meters. Or I mean, 72.4 is the scalar times the cosine of this angle here of the, 50, of the 58 degrees. The Y component of vector A will then be 72.4 times the sine of 58 degrees. And since I already did this, I'm just going to write them down. I, what we got, we will get 38.37 meters here. And we'll get uh, 61.4 meters for the Y. And now let's calculate the X and Y component of vector B. And the same idea. Think of it as a right triangle. This is going to be the X component. And this is going to be the Y component. Just to give you a visual, so the X component of vector B will be 57.3 times the cosine of this angle of, the, of 216 degrees. And the Y component will be same idea here except we're going to use 57.3 again times the sine of 216 degrees and since i already did it i'll just refer to my little paper piece of paper which will give us negative 46.36 meters for that. And for here, I'm going to get negative 33.68 meters. All right. Now we just have to find the Y component or the X and Y component of vector C. And actually, yeah, just the Y, because there really is no X. It doesn't change. It doesn't move left to right. It just goes down. And so we're going to get zero for the X component. I mean, you can still actually want calculate it if you want, but you'll just have to do um, the 17.8 times the cosine of 270 degrees. And I just remembered, I just, I just realized I forgot to write it, but going around there, that'll give us a 270 degree angle. And that ends up being zero. And now we just look at the Y component, which will be 17.8 times the sine of 270 degrees, giving us negative 17.8 meters. And I don't even know why I looked, because it's just going down that amount. 
this is just literally 17.8. So this should be obvious. And so then now we can find the, the x component of the resultant vector. We just add the, the x components that we've got from here, here, and here. So add in the 38.37 and the negative 46.36 and the 0, giving us. We're at negative 7.99. And meters, of course. And then the y components will be, whoa, 9.92 9 9 meters. Plug in that, those two into here now, we can get the resultant vector by taking the square roots of those two things, although we're those two values, I should say. Negative 7.99 squared plus 9.92 squared, all square rooted. And we'll get a 20 or 12.7 meters. All right, let me move that a little bit. Now, that will give us this magnitude, how far we go in that direction, but we have to figure out the measurement now, of the angle. Um, let's, so let's over here, let's draw this a little bigger so we can see what we're talking about more, more easily. Let me erase that a little bit. Give us some more space. Okay, so we have our x, y axes. I'm going to go to red for this. Um, actually, let me go to. Let me go with purple. So a resultant vector we found to be 12.7 meters Now we need to find this angle and for that we're going to use the inverse tangent function where we're going to just simply calculate a second where should I, I could fit it right, I could write it over here. Yeah, the inverse tangent of y over x or the, the 9.92 over negative 7.99. Giving us, an angle of, I don't have it written down here, but I believe it's going to be in like negative 50 or something. So 9.92 divided by negative 7.99. Yeah, negative 51. Point one five degrees. Okay, so here's the thing you have to be careful about. This is why it's always good to have a, a picture and a diagram to make sure your answers are making sense. This is obviously not going to be that angle because this angle is going to be going, going down in this direction. It's probably going to be something like it's going to be something like that. So it's like, well, what, what's going on? It's like, well, how, how, what do we do? Well, it's pretty, it's pretty easy because it's just going to be on the other end of this line. These lines are actually going to coincide. 
or I mean, are going to be are going to line up perfectly. So this angle, or this red angle here, is simply this angle plus 180, because we're just adding one. I mean, this entire red angle is is just essentially adding 180 going around. So we can find the angle theta. Let's go over here by writing negative 51.15 degrees plus 180, giving us 128.85 degrees. Let's write it over here to make it official, 128.85 degrees. Now, if you're wondering, like, you know, why is that? What's the issue with that? It's because the inverse tangent function is or has a domain of only rank going from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 or negative 9 degrees to 9 degrees. You don't need to know that. I know that because I'm actually a math teacher and I do math, you know, obviously a lot. Um, but that's really the reason. So um, just make sure you always have a good diagram. And... And that's really it. You, again, you just have to make sure that you always understand like the direction and the magnitude of the vectors, and make sure that it's making sense as you're working out, working through the problem. And um, you're gonna find that this stuff is actually really fun and um, pretty pretty simple once you start getting it. But um, yeah, I hope that helps.